Hey there, friends. This book is called The Animal Toolkit, How Animals Use Tools. And it's an interesting book. Go ahead and subscribe. Don't forget to come back because there's always lots of good books here on my channel. The Animal Toolkit. <clears throat> Humans use tools to help them work, play, eat, fight, and more. Animals also use tools sometimes for the same reasons. Scientists who study animals don't always agree on just what a tool is. In this book, a tool is an object that an animal manipulates and uses to affect its environment, another animal, or itself. A twig used by a monkey to spear termites is a tool, but a tree trunk used <clears throat> by a bear to scratch its back is not. A tool may be a rock or a stick. It could be a coconut shell or a leaf. A tool might even be another living creature. Some animals, such as insects and fish, are born with the ability to be tool users. Others, such as birds and monkeys, figure out how to use tools by watching other animals. Read this book and perhaps you'll learn new ways to crack an egg, sew a nest, or protect your tender nose. All right. Drummer boy. Other than humans... The palm cockatoo is the only animal we know of that uses an object to make rhythmic sounds. A male bird selects a stick, shapes it with his beak, and uses it to tap out a beat on a tree limb. He's doing this to impress and attract a female cockatoo. See, there's a stick, palm cockatoo, shaping the drumstick, calling all females. Now we have the egg breaker. The Egyptian vulture has a taste for ostrich eggs, but there's a problem. The ostrich's eggshell is too tough for the vulture to break with his beak. So the vulture picks up a rock and throws it at the egg until it shatters. We have rock, ostrich egg, ready, aim, breakfast. Eat, drink, fight. Like humans, chimpanzees use lots of different tools. A stick can be a spear or a termite catching device. A handful of wadded up leaves makes a sponge handy for taking a drink. Chimpanzees throw stones using them as weapons. Males will also throw stones at a tree. We're not sure why they do this. It may be to make a loud noise that attracts a female or warns other males to stay away. So there's the stick, leaves, rock, chimpanzee. Fishing for termites. Throwing a rock at a tree makes a satisfying boom sound. A spear, a leaf makes a handy sponge. Don't forget to floss. Apes and monkeys use sticks, plant fibers, and even human hair, ouch, to clean and floss their teeth. There's stick and human hair, a mandrel, he's a monkey, a macaw, he's a monkey, a cap capuchin, he's a monkey, a chimpanzee, he's an ape, and there's a stone. Keeping that smile bright, this won't hurt much. Time to floss. Watch your fingers. Crushing a nut. Pound it. Many primates use tools. Capuchins and chimpanzees both Use a stone to crack open nuts or shellfish. Baby's first meal. Before laying her eggs, a female thread-waisted wasp digs a hole. Next, she paralyzes a caterpillar with her sting. She drags the helpless larva into the hole and lays a single egg on it. Finally, she fills in the hole using a stone to pack down the soil that covers her nest. When the egg hatches, there will be a meal waiting for her hungry offspring. There's the thread-waisted wa wasp and a stone and the unfortunate caterpillar. So glad you could come for dinner, securing the nest. A trap of silk and stone. The Corolla spider is also called the seven stone spider. It collects quartz stones usually seven of them, and arranges them around its burrow. 
quartz is especially good at transmitting vibrations. The spider attaches a silk thread to each stone and touches the threads with her legs. When an insect brushes against one of the stones, it makes the silk threads vibrate. The spider feels the vibration, lunges, and grabs its prey. There's the Corolla spider, a quartz stone, setting the trap, waiting for a victim. Ah. Mobile home. Sometimes a coconut falls into the sea, sinks to the ocean floor, and breaks in two. If a coconut octopus finds the halves of a coconut shell, it carries them along as a portable shelter. When danger threatens, the octopus tucks itself inside and pulls the halves of the shell together. There's a coconut. There's a coconut octopus. It's adrift. Just what I was looking for. Watch me disappear. Mm. Tough crab. The boxer crab defends itself with a pair of venomous sea anemone. It plucks them from the seafloor and displays them like boxing gloves. Fish, eels, and other predators want to avoid the anemone's stinging cells, so they try for easier prey. Boxer crab, anemone, choose your weapons. This crab is ready to rumble. Better back off. Seamstress, the female common tailor bird, uses spiderweb silk or plant fibers, there's a leaf, as thread and her beak as a needle. She stitches the edges of a leaf together to make a nest, then pads it with grass, feathers, and other soft materials. Collecting thread, one last stitch, padding the nest. Protective parents. The female South American, ooh, Chichidlid lays her eggs on a leaf. She and her mate choose one that is large enough to hold her eggs, but easy to pick up and carry. If danger threatens, the parents will move their precious cargo to a safer location. South America, Chichidlid, leaf. This leaf is just right. Let's get these eggs to safety. Seafood. A sea otter picks up a stone from the seafloor and stores it in a pouch formed by a flack of skin under each arm. When the, other, when the otter finds a clam or a mussel, it floats on its back, places the stone on its chest, and smashes the shellfish against the stone to get to the tender morsel inside. Looking for the perfect stone. Time for a snack. Useful leaves. The orangutan uses leaves in creative ways. This gentle ape makes a kind of glove out of need leaves. This protects his hand as it picks and handles spiky rainforest fruit. A large leaf may also make a good umbrella in a rainstorm. Leaf, orangutan, handling a prickly fruit, staying dry in a rainstorm. Poking, picking, testing. A stick is a versatile tool. It can be used to probe a termite nest or separate the tasty seeds of the Nisia food from the irritating fibers that surround them. Orangutans also use a stick to check the depth of a pond or stream. There's a stick, snagging termites, picking out the tasty seeds. How deep is this water? Clever bird. The crow is one of the first animals that scientists recognized as a tool user. Since then, many examples of tool use by this intelligent bird have been found. Crows fashion a tool for spearing grubs by trimming a spiny edged leaf, and young crows have pretend fights with sticks. Crow, trimmed leaf, stick, sword fighting just for fun. Impaling a grub. Spiny. The woodpecker finch plucks and trims a cactus spine. It uses the needle-like spine to extract insect larvae from tree trunks and branches. Cactus. Woodpecker finch. Careful. Probing for insects. 
hunting with fire. Birds known as fire raptors, such as this black kite, carry burning branches from a wildfire to an unburned spot. They start new fires to flush out the small animals they hunt. Black kite, burning stick, fire starter. A kuka flees the flames, flushing out its prey. Fly swatter. A clever Asian elephant breaks off a tree branch and trims it to the proper size and shape with its trunk. It uses the branches to swat flies and other pesky insects. Elephant and tree branch. Selecting a branch. Flicking away the flies. Good riddance. Like many birds, puffins can be tormented by ticks. But the puffin takes matters into its own beak. It uses a stick to pry the parasites from its body. Puffins also use a stick just to scratch an itch. Puffin, stick, choosing a stick, tick. Pest removed. See, there's the tick. Rock rubbing. Every spring, grizzly bears molt. They shed the dense layer of fur that keeps them warm through the winter. A bear will scratch itself with its claws or rub its body against a tree to remove the old fur. And some bears use a tool, such as a rock, rough, barnacle-covered rock to speed up the process. River rock, grizzly bear, choosing a rock. The rock works best on wet fur. That feels good. Shelling. A group of bottlenose dolphins in Shark Bay, Australia, have learned to drive fish into an empty conch shell. They carry the shell to the surface, shake out the fish, and swallow them. Conch shell. Bottlenose dolphin. Herding a fish. Shaking out its catch. See, the fish goes inside there. And sponging. The same kind of dolphin holds, holds a sponge in its mouth to protect its tender beak as it probes the rocks and coral of the seafloor. When the dolphin flushes out a fish, it drops the sponge and grabs its prey. Sponge, beak protection, startling a fish. Dig it. Digging a burrow in hard, rocky earth is a tough job. The pocket gopher uses a stone to help break up the soil. Pocket gopher, stone, making a burrow, home sweet home. And then there's a page with more information about the animals in this book. If you want, you can pause and read all of that. So many interesting ways that animals use tools. There's a bunch more on this side because it talked about a lot of different animals. So, and there's one last otter and crow. That was called the Animal Toolkit, How Animals Use Tools. Hope you enjoyed it and that you subscribe and come back often. There's always something new.